dear friends and colleagues, tonight I'm going to talk about BIN, which stands for Balbar Intraepithelial Neoplasia. First of all, I'm going to say this is a rare, a rare condition. Probably, if you're not a specialist in bulbar pathology, you're not going to see a lot of this, but you have to think about it. It's around the end, the incidence is around 0.5 to, to 1.5 over 1,000 women, 1,100 women. So, this incidence has risen in the last years, and but we are, we, if this was the precursor of cancer, if this really was the precursor of cancer, bowel cancer should have risen too, but it hasn't in the last decades. So, bulbar intrapetelial neoplasia, when it was first uh, classified, it was in analogy, and the disease was in 1986, it was in analogy with the cervical CIN terminology. Yeah, CIN 1, 2, and 3, right? 2, BIN 1, 2, and 3. But the bulba is not probably not the same than the cervix. First of all, the bulba has no transformation zone. There's no changes of lining of epithelium. There's all the same squamous stratified and also with keratin in some areas, epithelium, so it's quite different. Also, lesions for, of HPV in the bulba, with the virus of HPV, act quite different than in the cervix. There's also, of course, there's HPV in the bulba, of course there are cancer precursors in the bulba, but they are quite different than they act in the cervix. So, this was revised and this was also uh, acknowledge that this is not different. Why was that? Because BIN1 BIN1 is a really poorly reproductive lesion. What happens with BIN1 is only a viral infection which is usually transient which is usually going to go away by itself and it's probably not going to cause any problems and never, never is going to progress to cancer which is where we are worried about. So, if we are talking about BIN, BIN, like neoplasia, we have to talk about cancer precursors. So, this classification changed in 2004 in a meeting of the International Society for the study of vulvovaginal disease, yes, ISSBD, that just ch took out BIN from the classification BIN1 as a cancer precursor, and they just left it as BIN. So all high grade is just BIN, not BIN2 or 3, just BIN. As etiologies, like precursors of bulbar squamous cancer not any cancer there are some other rare cancers like melanoma and invasive cancer related with Paget disease which are rare but we are going to talk about the precursors of squamous bulbar cancer precursors so we have two types which I am going to call them day, are night, and night for us to remember because they are quite different entities. They are really, really opposite entities. So now I am going to talk about the differences of these two BIM. First of all, they have a different name. So the most common type of bean, which is usual type, day, which is a little bit better, and the least common, which is the differentiated 
type whose name is quite confusing because it says it's differentiated and it's actually the worst kind because it has much more cancer progression potential, right? So, usual type by BIN is 90% of BIN. So if we read something in the literature and we are now what they are talking about on where they don't make any difference, they are probably talking about this or mostly about this because this is the most common. And then this is the least common BIN which is around 10%. So the usual type BIN has an association with HPV virus usually the high-risk types, right? This has no association with HPV, but is associated with lichen sclerosis and hyperplasia, epithelial hyperplasia, which are the bulbar dermatosis. Okay, so HPV infections usually affect young women and this dermatosis, they could affect all the ages, but usually they affect older women, right? The night of the life, you know, the day of the life, young, the night, all the women, right? They are also very different how they present. In both of them, around 50% are asymptomatic. They don't cause any symptoms. Some, in some persons, in some women, they cause the itching or pruritus, and, or they see the lesions. They just see the lesions, and sometimes they are, they are um, annoying, or they cause embarrassment, and things like that. So how are these lesions different and why? So usually in young women, we can have multiple kinds of lesions. They are usually multifocal lesions. There's not only one lesion and they could be very different in size, shape and color, right? They, they could be macules, the pigmentations, it could be plaques, they could resemble condyloma, but usually they see quite different, for example, condyloma with some pigmentation, some kind of different, different than usual condyloma. When we see some kind of verrucous lesion that resembles condyloma, we are not sure, we have to think about BIN, right? Usual type. And in older women, they are usually associated with these lesions that we can see the skin with, for example, the labia minora kind of disappearance and with white plaques and distortion of the anatomy is very, very common in all ladies to see the clitoris probably down in the folds and we can see them in, in the extreme uh, cases they could have a chlorosis which is a total closing of, closing of the introitus. And how can the, we see the lesions? We usually see uh, unique lesions over this kind of skin. Uh, it could be a white plague. They could, we could see erosions we can see uh, lesions with uh, pigmentation also, and we can see tumors. So, so when we see any kind of lesion over uh, this kind of feel in a, an old lady with a bulbar dermatosis, we have to think about BIN and we have to take a biopsy. We are right. Once we have the diagnosis, usually if we have any doubt, we have to do the biopsy in both of them, right? And to start treatment, we have to do the biopsy because we need to have, we need to know if this is BIN. 
So once we have the biopsy, the treatments are also going to be very different. We could also be the same, right? They could be, we could use very different treatments. So in the usual type BIN, and also in the differentiated type, the gold standard is surgery. This is supposed to be a knife, a really bad writing, but okay, surgery. And why is that? Surgery has very good advantages that give us a surgical piece that allows us to make the anatomopathological diagnosis. And for what is this important? To exclude the cancer, right? Which is our problem. Here, our problem is cancer. So, in both cases, the gold standard is surgical treatment, right? So, how deep has to be the resection? Um, the deepness should go up to the hypodermis, which is the fat we see uh, down there in the, uh, down the skin, subcutaneous fat. It's the first layer of fat. And this is important, why? Because we have the skin here, and we have the hair follicles that can go deep with the skin. So if we, go, if we don't go very deep up to the root of the skin follicle, we might leave the lesion down here in this area. So we have to go to the hypodermis. And how, how much margin around the lesion? Usually we have to give it the margin. Ideally between 0.5 and one centimeter, but in some areas, for example, near the urethra or near the anus or near the clitoris, is probably, we could probably be a little bit more conservative and narrow a little bit this kind of margin. Okay, so this is surgical, is gold standard for all, both kinds of BIN. But in usual type BIN, surgery sometimes could be mutilating right? It could cause damage, it could cause sequela for a sexual future of the patient. Let's remember that these ladies are young ladies, daylight being, that are going to have a long and prolonged sexual life. And there is something that came out which is called imiquimol, which is a cream, right? It's a cream that could be apply, applied by the patient. So medical treatment for BIN only, only for usual type by BIN, for young ladies, right? First of all, with biopsies excluding invasion. So imiquimod, how is it applied and how does it work? Imiquimod is an immune system enhancer, right? There's no drug yet on the market, unfortunately, that kills HPV. It does not exist. But what this drug does, this cream does, it enhances the local skin immune system that makes this local immune system act over the cells infected by HPV and just kill them. They disappear. The advantage of this is that leaves no anatomical dysfunctions. The restitution is total and complete, no problems. The problem is sometimes that these treatments could be quite long. We usually give them like three times a week, usually at night for eight hours and then the patient, the patient washes the lesions away, the, the cream away, and it's usually uh, very irritating to the skin. Sometimes the skin gets uh, inflamed and red, and this is because the intense inflammatory reaction, that local immune response that produces the imiquimod. 
and it could be used up to four months and it's especially useful in young women. Never, never in micro mode for differentiated being. So, once we have the, done the treatment, what should we do? Or how we prevent this? Okay, uh, we know that these lesions tend to recur, both of them, no matter the margins are free. That's, for, that's why uh, local resections and not uh, the classical bulbectomies are recommended now because patients we ha that have uh, total bulbectomies uh, have probably the same chance of recurrence of BIN. But the recurrence is of BIN, it's not as cancer. So it is important to follow these patients because if the, the BIN recurs, then the cancer can come, right? So what, what are we are supposed to do with this patient? We should follow them after treatment at least for every two, four to six months for the first couple of years and then annually and forever. We, we don't stop following them after they are done for pap smear at 65 or 70. We, we have to keep following them uh, because probably they are going to live long and they have a lot of time to recur and they are very recurrent lesions. And if we have the possibility, um, we could also test them for HPV. This is not that usual here in the bubble, but that's an option. If they are negative, we could be a little bit more relaxed. And we could prevent with vaccination. Of course, before this has came out, right? And we also recommend usual type BIN. Please, ladies, do not smoke cigarettes. Do not smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes are a well-known factor that uh, is related to the recurrence and the occurrence of BIN, usual type. And so, to remember, this is 90% of BIM and produces around 20 to 30% of vulva cancer. And this is 10% of BIM and is around 80% responsible of the cancer. So we have to look at this, especially these ladies. They are not going to come to us because many of them, 50% of them, are asymptomatic, no symptoms. So let's look at them and if what, do, what to do about a treatment of uh, bulbar dermatosis, lichen sclerosis, we have to treat them. We have to treat them to prevent the deformities. We don't know if treatment is going to prevent the cancer, but we do think that we have to treat them. And for young women, we should try to be the most conservative as we can and is probably something rare for uh, gynecologists, but we have to think about this. We have to have this in our heads to help our patients. I hope you have understand. Thank you for listening. Good night and have a good one. Bye.